What is up you guys, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're going to jump into Premiere Pro and achieve a moody look in your videos. Now if you want to achieve this look in photographs, I already made a tutorial about that. You can look it up up here in the cards if you want to go check it out. But for video, we're just going to jump into Premiere Pro, edit a few clips. We're not going to use any LUTs in this video, so it's just going to be straight on manual editing. So let's jump into it. Okay guys, once in Premiere we have three clips. We have this one of myself editing in the forest on my cell phone. Then I have this one of Kevin walking in the woods in a very foggy day. And finally we have another one in slow motion of the subject over here. Now these three clips have two things in common. First of all, they were shot in an overcast day or a rainy day. And secondly, they were shot in a flat picture profile like Cine 2 or Cine 3 in Sony or log format in any other brand or any other camera. So shooting in log or in flat picture profiles will allow you to have a bigger dynamic range in your image that your camera actually has. So a flat picture profile, what it does is desaturate all your image. It also reduces the contrast and brightens up the shadows. So you have a lot more information in the shadows and in the highlights, guys. So let's jump into edit this. So I think I'm going to edit this one, guys, of Kevin walking in the forest. So we're going to go over to our colors workspace over here. And then the Lumetri tab will appear at the right, guys. We're also going to use the Lumetri scopes to correctly white balance and correctly expose this image. So the first thing that we're going to do is that, guys. So in basic corrections in the Lumetri tab, what we're going to do is, first of all, select the white balancing tool to correctly white balance this image. Now, it's very simple, guys. Just going to select the eyedropper over here and select anything in your image that is pure white. So in this case, the fog is pure white and we're going to select it. And well, nothing changed because this image is correctly exposed. But let's see this one. We're going to select the eyedropper tool and select over here. And as we can see, the temperature and the tint has been automatically alterated to compensate the whites in this image. Therefore, all the colors in this image will be now correctly color graded. Okay, so back to this one. Okay, so next up, we're gonna correct this image. So we're gonna bring a lot of the color back and a lot of the contrast. For that, we're gonna use the Lumetri scopes and in particular, the Luma waveform over here. If you don't see this, you can always go down to window and select Lumetri scopes over here and this image will appear. Now, the Lumiscopes basically is a graphical representation of the luminance on this image. So if we play this image, we can see the overall exposure of this image. Here we can see the silhouette of the subject in the middle and the brightest parts of our image will be at the top nearing the 100% and the darkest parts nearing the 0%. So what we want to do is move the blacks all the way down until something touches that zero line. As we can see, a little point over here is touching it. That's the shade under this plant and basically we're knowing that this part of the image has enough dark parts to be correctly contrasted. Next up, the highlights. Here we have some overexposure. So we're going to drag down the whites until something is barely touching that whitest part, guys. And finally, we're just going to add some saturation to this image to make it a lot more realistic. 135%. In this case, it's going to be what I choose. And there, basically, we've de-logged this image, if we want to say it, or de-flattened it so it's more realistic. Okay, next up, we're going to add our color grading, guys. And for that, I'm going to add another Lumetri Scopes tab. So we're going to go to Effects, type in Lumetri Color, and we're going to drag it over our clip once again. Now, in Effects Controls, here we can see another Lumetri tab has appeared. And over here in the Lumetri Color, we can change from one Lumetri to another. Now, in this case, we're going to go all the way down to the curves. And the first thing I'm going to do is add some contrast. So I'm going to add an S shape, bringing down the shadows and lifting up the highlights just a bit, just like that, guys. Quite happy with that. Next up in the hue versus sat curve, basically we can select a color and desaturate. So in this case, I'm going to desaturate all the blues and some of the greens. So for that, I'm going to select a point over here, selecting the warmish tones, then over here, another point. I'm just going to drag the blues down. And as we can see, that blue mark on the tree has largely disappeared. And also, I'm just going to drag down the greens just a bit to make them a bit more desaturated, something like that. That's just my personal preference, guys. You can alter with the colors as you wish. Then the oranges in the ground, I'm just going to pop them up, just moving this point just a little bit up, just like that, to saturate it a bit more. Now, the next curve that we have is the hue versus hue. And in this one, it basically acts like the tone curve in HSL in Lightroom, where we can alter the colors. So in this case, what I want to do is maybe alter a bit of the greens to a more emerald-like color. So I'm just going to select this point over here and move the greens all the way down towards the emeralds. Just like that, guys. All the foliage in the ground, I'm just gonna ump it up towards the reddish tones, just like that. And finally, in the hue versus luma, I'm just gonna ump up a bit of the reds to make them pop up just a little bit more. Not too much, I don't want the ground to glow or something like that, just a bit. Okay, now it's acquiring a bit of that taste. You can see what we've done by clicking on and off the curves. And it's looking quite good, guys. 
maybe I would go back to the main tone curve over here and add a bit more contrast just like that okay so it's looking nice guys but we're not quite finished next up I'm gonna add a teal color to the shadows just to emphasize a bit of that moody cold vibe so for that I'm gonna go to effects lumetri color once again I'm gonna drag it over our clip another lumetri stance and here in the tone curves what I'm gonna do is go to the red tone curve make a point in the middle so we don't affect the higher part of our tone curve and just move the shadows and the blacks all the way to the right side and as we can see if the further we move it to the right the more teal color appears in the shadows and in the blacks I'm not gonna go move it too much just around there and it's a very subtle touch guys but it really adds to this cold vibe that we want to achieve now the teal color has appeared in the shadows but also in the blacks and that's something I don't like so if we zoom in we can see that the blacks of the subject have this green vibe and I'm not really liking that guys this green tone so for that I'm just gonna add another lumetri color over here drag it on top and this one we're gonna go to the luma versus sad curve over here make a point in the shadows and drag the blacks down basically now what I've achieved is desaturating the blacks completely so there's no saturation in the darkest parts of our image okay so next up I want to darken some parts of the image and lighten another ones so for that I'm gonna use something like the gradient filters that we have on Lightroom so in this case I'm just gonna drag another once again another lumetri color over our clip go to effects controls and in this one I'm just gonna select the masking tool so in this case I'm just gonna select the rectangle tool and just drag it all the way to this part of the image I'm just going to darken this part of, it, of the image in general. I'm going to feather it out as much as I want over here and then just drag the exposure down of this part of the image to make it a lot more dark. And then I'm just going to do the opposite, create another effect, another lumetri color over our clips and this one I'm going to create a mask on top this time to make the brightest parts of our image pop up a lot more. Something like that feather it out once again and then just add a bit more exposure over here and that basically adds a lot more contrast in the image on top and on the bottom centering our view in the middle where our subject is guys so we can see that before and after this is how the clip was originally and then if we apply all the lumetri colors once again and yeah it's looking very moody and very acquainted to the situation guys I'm liking it a lot it's, very, it's a very stylized look and yeah we've added a lot of lumetri color layers but it really looks awesome guys and this is the effect that we wanted very acquainted to the situation now let's do another one let's do this one where Kevin is in the middle of the frame and here we have some skin tones so it's a bit more complex okay so this one is a bit more complex guys because we have some skin tones I want to achieve correct skin tones we don't want him to be something unnatural or yellow or or reddish or anything like that so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to the Lumetri tab once again and in basic corrections first of all we're gonna correctly white balance this image here we can see where it's affected a bit of the tint and a bit of the temperature to bring them up and then we're gonna go once again to the Lumetri scopes to the Luma waveform and correctly white balance all of this image so for this one I'm just gonna do the same basic corrections the white balancing and all of that just gonna jump that and next up in the tone curves we're just gonna add our effects once again just add a bit more contrast in this case just like that guys now with the tone curves we're not going to touch anything from the oranges to the reddish that will determine the skin tone so those colors we're going to isolate them so we don't move them then i'm just going to desaturate a bit of the greens and a bit of the blues once again then in the hue versus hue again we're not going to touch the skin tone so those aren't going to be affected but we are going to affect a bit of the greens and the blues just like that guys so next up i'm just going to add that teal color to the shadows once again just by creating this gradient on the reds once again and then in another lumetri color layer I'm just going to select the skin tones so we can achieve rich and correct skin tones and we're going to go all the way down to the HSL secondary now here in HSL secondary what we're going to do is select the skin tones of our subject if you want a more in-depth tutorial on HSL secondary I already made a video about that I'll link it up here in the cards once again so with the eyedropper tool we're going to select the skin tones of Kevin select this box color gray so we can see what we're selecting and now we're going to move the scopes all of the sliders until we have full selection of the skin tones of the subject so just like that guys then I'm going to add some denoise and some blur effects so we don't get some strange artifacts in our selection and then I'm just going to go all the way down to the corrections hit this little color wheel so we have the three color wheels and here we're going to apply some colors 
to achieve some rich skin tones. And for that, we're gonna use the Lumetri scopes, but it's not gonna be the waveform. In this case, we're gonna right click and select the vector scope. Now the vector scope basically is a circle where it determines where the colors of the image are towards and with what intense saturation. The further this white part of the image is from the middle, the more saturated it's gonna be. So here we can see what our skin tones are. And they're basically in this line, which is called the flesh line, which is in the middle of the yellows and the reds. So let's say that our colors were towards the, the yellows. So what we wanted to do to correct this is move the scopes to the other side by adding some magentas and some purples. Yeah, so something like that, guys. So in this case, it's quite precise. I'm just going to add a bit more saturation to see what we're working with. And it's basically in the middle. What we want it to be is just a little bit to the right of the flesh line towards the reds. So for that, I'm just going to add a bit more red into the tones, just like that. I'm going to desaturate it. And there it is, precise skin tones. Next up, I'm just going to add some reddish tones into the shadows just to make it a bit more fleshy. And finally, in the highlights, well, the highlights will depend on the reflection on your skin from the ambient light. So in this case, it's a very white uh, tones in the highlights. So I'm just going to add a bit more blue into the highlight just like that to make them more realistic to the situation. So I'm just going to click on and off HSL secondary so we can see what we've done. It's a very subtle touch, but it's basically eradicated that greenish tones that we get from Sony cameras. This was shot in an AC6500. So here we can see the greenish tones are yellowish tones. Now we have activate what we've done HSL secondary and the skin tones are more acquainted to what the skin tones of the subject is in the real life guys. So that's a way you can achieve correct skin tones. And finally, what I'm going to do for this one is just create some color contrast between the subject and the background. So for that, I'm going to go all the way down to control effects once again, slide down to select this Lumetri color that we just did, right click, copy and paste it in the same clip. And now over here in the selection on the second Lumetri, we're going to invert our selection. So we're selecting everything but our subject or the skin tones of our subject. And over here in the color wheel, I'm just going to add a little bit of blue tint to everything. Just like that, guys. What we've created is some color contrast between our subject, the skin tones and the background. Here we can see what we've done. It's a very subtle touch, guys, but it really adds to this moody vibe and this effect. And that's all I do, guys, to achieve a moody look in Premiere Pro. I know there are several layers of Lumetri color, but I highly recommend you to do this and um, to put every single effect into a different layer to so have better control, better organization of your color grading so you can see what each layer does and basically like that they're not affecting each other guys so that's how i go clip by clip color grading manually guys but normally i don't have the time so sometimes i just slap on a lot on top of it a filter and then i just edit the clips individually to make them match now if you don't know what a lot is it's basically a filter or a preset from lightroom which you can apply to your footage on premiere pro and talking about filters guys i've created a lot pack with 12 cinematic LUTs. If you want to go check it out, it's linked down below. That's a way you can support me. So this lot pack has everything from uh, warm color grading to more moody like, higher contrast to more faded. If you want to go check it out, it's linked down below. That's a way you can support me. Anyway, guys, if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. After the fun test, cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.